And I'm like, but I'm, but this is a finance position. Like, I don't understand. Like, what? Why did I? Uh, why did I study finance if uh, I should have studied accounting to get a finance job? If that's what I wanted over there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the- Welcome to the Financial Innovations Podcast. We're helping CFOs save money and time by investing in cutting edge technology. I'm your host, Daniel Villani. Uh, Really excited today to have Sandra Moreno on the uh, call here. Sandra, great to great to have you on. Hi, Dale. Thank you for having me, too. It's it's a pleasure to, to meet you and your team. Yeah, so we're really excited about uh, today's episode just because, you know, Sandra, you've got a lot of experience with uh, large businesses, small businesses. I know, um, you know, questions that or comments that come up all the time uh, with, uh, you know, customers I have is, you know, when they're a small business, they say, oh, if only we were a larger business and we had a bigger budget, all these problems would be figured out. You go to the larger businesses and they don't have all those problems figured out. Um, so, you know, it's, it's extra exciting to get, um, you know, your input on, you know, maybe some of the challenges that, you know, are facing, you know, larger businesses today, maybe topics that are universal to, you know, to smaller businesses as well. You know, we'd love to just, uh, you know, maybe if you want to start, tell us a little bit about uh, your background and then we could go into, uh, you know, into the topics here. Yeah, sure. Um, so I am, uh, I have a bachelor's degree. It would be equivalent because I actually didn't study here. I studied in my country, which is Chile. Um, so I do speak Spanish, but I have my uh, degree in accounting. That's, that's what it's called. It's called accounting. And also we do have my specialty is also audit. So I have both. And, um, so I could basically work on both fields and, um, I have been working for more than 14, I think, I think I, at this point it's 15 years in the, in different companies, uh, basically growing, um, my professional skills. Uh, I started as an analyst, then I went to accounting, then I was, um, uh, like us, kind of like a chief accounting, um, and then I was a senior finance analyst, so not dealing with accounting directly, but more analyzing data. And um, I went to another role in like Latin America, just more like consolidation type of role. And now I'm a finance manager in a, the U.S. business um, of a huge toy company. And um, <laughs> when you mentioned the challenges, I think all... All the, the, I think that one of the main problems that all the companies I've seen have are related to systems. Um, unfortunately, because obviously we have different departments and we have different things that we want to track to make sure that, you know, um, the company is moving forward to the business goals that they propose. And unfortunately, each department, when it's a big business, each department is kind of solving for their own needs in different system tools. Um, so obviously everybody starts with Excel. That's like the main tool that everybody uses. But then as you get um, bigger in size, you start seeing that obviously they have a more robust type of um, solutions for systems. But those also have their own challenges, which is that they don't connect as well with other departments and other needs. So at the end, you see that in those bigger companies, you still have those same challenges. So they're like, how do we have in one place everything so that everybody can see the same data? And, you know, you don't have like sales reporting one data, operations reporting another, finance reporting another, and everybody's not speaking. Like the numbers don't speak to each other. They have to be, there's so many meetings that they have to do just to coordinate and align the numbers, right? Which is, if you think about it, it's kind of, ridiculous that we even have to spend time doing that because technology has advanced so much but it's they have not um made the right solution to have include all these type of problems right so i think that's definitely one of the main challenges and as and the business when it gets bigger uh, sorry when it's a smaller what i've seen also 
is the problem that they have with the systems is that they're changing them all the time to try to have one that fits all the needs, right? So it's kind of like they're still, and that is a big problem because you're changing them like every year. I have seen companies change every year a system and you know, in some cases, you lose the data that you had in the other one because now it's a new system. So you like you kind of lose a lot of the trackability of the information, which is very important for a business to even plan for the future. You know, if that makes sense. So I think that it's it's a struggle, but at, at different levels, right? One is to consolidate; the other one's to find the right solution. But but then at the end, they end up changing the solution, and each solution. I feel like I have not seen one single tool that I could say, this is the perfect tool that has everything, unfortunately, Um, because they all focus on different things, I think. Um, And obviously, as a a finance uh, person, my worry is always going to be the numbers and that the, uh, you know, like, that is the right number, accurate numbers. But you also need to be like planning for numbers and planning for demand and planning for, um, you know, sales and those type of things are also important. And that normally the finance type of tools do not have those capabilities of planning, right? So I think that is definitely the challenge. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, one of one of the things that, you know, that I see and, you know, I don't know if this is uh, the same as your case, right, is the... The smaller companies, the the problem seems to be more often than not not necessarily a technology problem, but a process problem where the you know the processes aren't very mature. Um, you know everything's being done in spreadsheets, files are being passed around. The software vendors are saying, "Oh, files are bad. Uh, you know if spreadsheets are terrible. Uh, you shouldn't be using spreadsheets. Uh, you're passing files around." And you know bigger companies they buy, you know, all sorts of different technology to go and prevent them from passing files around. And instead, you're passing data feeds around. And uh, now it's I need a feed for my dashboarding system. And I need a, a feed for my planning system. And it's not the same feed, because it's got to be in all different formats. And right, it opens the door to bigger types of challenges of, you know, making sure that the data that's being sent from system A to system B to system C is all, you know, consistent with each other, uh, which I think is what you were alluding to in terms of, you know, spending enormous amounts of time checking data in all the different places that you have it to make sure that that it's the same all over the place. Yeah, exactly. And also when um, they they are bigger companies, the, the, the challenges that they have, especially when they have like a lot of products, is that everybody wants a different view of the product, right? So let's say you you have brands, those brands have different products inside them, but then leadership wants this type of structure for your brand, this classification for this brand. So you start creating also mappings to say, to say, okay, this is the leadership mapping. This is for finance mapping. And then operation has another mapping, right? So you're like, that's also one of the disconnections that happened that you need to validate the data because it's like, okay, but what did you include in this mapping? Oh, we, you know, you missed something or, or things like that, which obviously it's, it's rough, right? And, and as we say, smaller companies have challenges with their process because they're like growing. They don't sometimes, depending on, I, I'm saying, I'm talking about like really small businesses that are like maybe five employees are starting out. The challenges that they have is that they don't know how to grow a business so they are like as you're saying somebody suggests one thing and they take it and then they somebody else suggested another thing and they go and take it so now they're like having which one is best and they don't even know what they want or what they need right because they don't know all the all that's available or or all that they can use you know so it's like they're just going with the flow of whoever suggests the best but and I guess that's one of the things like you see in smaller businesses that they can change pretty quickly their process and um, their systems even super fast because, you know, sometimes the decisions is just on the owner and it just goes really fast. And then on bigger companies, you have to wait for 
like five years just to ca- get a new system, right? Because there's so much approvals and testing and validation if this is the right tool, you know, due diligence, et cetera. Um, you know, make sure security. Like there's so many things that go in place in, into implementing on a system. So I was involved, by the way, in implementing one system that we had. So I know that it, it takes a while. And sometimes you start saying, it's going to take two years. And then you end up with five years because there's like so much things that go along the process of implementation. So yeah, there's definitely, um, I think that is basically the main issue is like, how do we get the data that's coming in? That's because when you have a bigger company, there's so many areas that you need to get data from. How do you get that? How do you make sure that that data is reliable? Right. How do you make sure that what you are, what you have in whatever system you're using is the right data that you need to evaluate to see if what steps you're going to do now for the business, basically. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and uh, it's great hearing, you know, hearing your perspective on this. And, uh, you know, I kind of laugh because, uh, you know, when you mentioned uh, coming from the accounting background, because, um, you know, back 15 plus years ago, when I was in college, I was studying finance, um, you know, and computer information systems. And I was originally looking for a finance job. And every single person that I talked to said, oh, the most qualified person for this position would be an accountant. And I'm like, but I'm, but this is a finance position. Like, I don't understand. Like, wh- why did I, uh, why did I study finance if uh, I should have studied accounting to get a finance job if that's what I wanted over there? Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it's funny that, uh, that you mentioned that, but, um, you know, I think it's interesting, um, you know, having your perspective of, you know, seeing the smaller companies, seeing the larger companies, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, about processes, uh, you know, being on the other side of implementing certain tools. Um, you know, it's, it's funny, you know, it's, it's hard sometimes not to laugh when, you know, people talk about implementation timelines on certain projects, like, oh, we're going to have uh, a new ERP in six months. Uh, we're going to start it tomorrow and, you know, we're going to go live. And, you know, there are some things that, you know, just going through the, um, you know, the, the experiences that you and I have gone through, you know, um, whether or not the, the likelihood of that being the case, but, you know, if, if you are a smaller company out there and, you know, you have a limited budget and, you know, you're you're saying, look, like, you know, we want to, uh, you know, improve our finance function, you know, where where is the best place to start? And, you know, at, at what level do you think that, um, you know, these organizations, these, you know, these businesses should be looking at bringing in systems to, you know, to, to augment their, you know, their processes that they're doing? So I think the I would say the smaller companies have it a little bit easier on that regards because there's right now a lot of tools in the market that are not expensive. And then they also use a lot of AI in them, which also allows them to be a little bit more automated for, you know, a business owner or for a smaller company. Um, where they don't have to basically learn a lot or know a lot to have their financials coming through correctly. Um, so obviously those tools, I know that this is the most common tool that the, the small business uses is QuickBooks for their finance. Um, but they have different levels of, um, advance. Um, so it depends on the state of that company. Obviously, if, if it's a bigger company and you need to have different departments, I don't know if that would require that, but I would say as a starting point, that is a basic, basic tool that I've seen. I know that tool and I've seen a lot of smaller businesses that use it and they have very great results with it. It has so many reports. It connects to a lot of uh, other systems that you can just have it embedded in that same system. So it allows a lot of, you know, like automation in that same system. Um, and I would say that that, like if a business owner wants to start with something, I would say that would be the best tool. I know that some businesses start with Excel, which I honestly would not really recommend because you, if you don't have like an accounting background, there's a lot of things that you might miss that you're not seeing in a company that is just in Excel, you cannot support that type. Like you have to have, create your own accounting mapping and, you know, to create, make sure that you have the, 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 
you know, like if something goes into the cash that that necessarily is uh, an expense or an income, you have to like know this type of um, information, which I think QuickBook kind of um, makes all the connections between your bank account so that it identifies if it's, a, you know, a car payment or is actually an expense, right? So because it identifies the vendor um, and it gives you some guidelines and it even suggests this like, hey, maybe I, it seems that this type of expense based on other companies um, that are similar to yours, they're using this expense in, you know, travel or in meals or in, you know, uh, admin or marketing, and they kind of identifies those um, expenses. So it's like very simple for a business owner to just leverage that um, automatic. Because also when they're doing it in Excel, they're spending more time trying to um, reconcile everything and make sure that everything is in there. And, you know, like whatever they they downloaded from their bank is, is everything is, is contemplated in this Excel. and it, it doesn't make sense for a business owner to even be doing that in, in an Excel, right? Because they need to be focusing on growing their business fast. That's the, the main focus that a, a, a new business or two-year or three-year old business should be focusing on. How do I expand this business fast, right? Um, and not really where are my numbers coming? And obviously, depending on the size, having an expert person coming and actually explaining those numbers and what does that mean for you? What actually are your goals for the business and to make sure that they're achieving those goals based on, you know, what the results are coming in and doing a uh, financial planning, I think it's really important also for them so that they, one of the things that I've identified in small businesses, they, you know, like marketing and, you know, promotion and Facebook and promotion and all these um, social medias is very hot. So they spend so much money on these platforms, but they don't have an effective um, marketing strategy when they're doing that. So I've like observed like they're spending tons of money and it's not creating the income that they need, but they keep spending it and nobody's telling them, hey, doesn't feel like your strategy is being effective. You need to change it. There's something needs to happen, right? Um, and that's the type of things and problems that they like. Somebody should be pointing out to them, and like an expert in finance would like easily tell them, "Hey, you're like spending thirty percent of your income in marketing. That is just horrendous, right? For a business, you're going to be, um, you know, lost in a short time. You need to." divert your your strategy in advertising um so i would say that that i hope that answers your question i think i, I went a little bit further but yeah <laughs> No, I mean, uh, the, you know, there are a bunch of takeaways, uh, you know, from that. I, I think that, you know, there are a lot of companies, big and small, that pride themselves on, oh, I didn't need to buy this piece of software or whatever because I can just do it myself and I can do it in, in the tools, right? And and there's always the question of there there's a difference between can I do this and is this the most, uh, you know, effective use of my time to do it, right? Where you know, you start talking about doing accounting in, in Excel, can you do it? Yes. But when you start to look at things like double entry accounting and having to put things in different places, and there's a lot of automation that a system opens up just out of the box without configuration that, you know, cuts a lot of time, right? And and you can say, hey, look, I saved, you know, $100 a month, $1,000 a month by not having to get uh, an ERP in here. And that's, that's great. But if you're spending, you know, 400 hours a month uh, going and chasing down invoices and purchase orders and, you know, doing all your bank reconciliations and all that kind of stuff, you got to ask yourself the question of, you know, was it worth it to save, you know, that kind of money to go and, you know, do that, that, that you know, those kind of activities. Um, you know, the other thing that you mentioned there, too, is, um, you know, reminds me of a uh, uh, I was saying I've, I've heard a lot, you know, in, in the business here of you get what you measure and, you know, anything that you do, whether it's implementing a system, whether it's, you know, going and doing a marketing campaign, you know, you should be able to have some KPIs behind that that are measurable in terms of, you know, is this getting me what I want? Right. Because to your point of, you know, if you're spending 30 percent of your income on on marketing, 
Um, I mean, that could be detrimental to your business, depending on what business you're in. It could be good if if your goal is not necessarily monetary, but say breaking into a new market and we'll spend whatever we've got to spend in order to go and, and do this. Um, and you spent it and now, you know, an entire country is uh, is opened up to, to buy from you or whatever. Maybe in the long run, that's that's great. But if you don't have those metrics in place, if you're focused on the activity itself and not you know, being able to look at the results and make a strategic decision based on what is actually happening, you know, then you're setting yourself up for, uh, you know, a, a not not very good situation. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Definitely. And, and also one of the challenges in, in the smaller companies are probably the cash flow issue. Um, because obviously they're saying I'm making so much money, but then I'm looking at my bank account and there's no money there. Like what's going on? Right. And, and the business owner doesn't even know where the money is going. Right. So they're like, what am I spending money on? Right. So obviously having a system allows them to have that visualize of like, okay, this is where my money is going. Maybe I'm a service company. So all my money is going on payroll. Right. Um, maybe I'm a, a product company. So all my, all my money is actually going on product and, Actually, I need to change my vendor because it's too expensive, right? Um, or in, in a service company, if I'm spending too much money on payroll, but, uh, you know, they're just sitting around, are they being effective with their time if they need to deliver a service, but they're like 20% booked, right? There's like, okay, then maybe you don't need this employee because they are not like you, 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 you could have one employee doing the same job than having two doing that job. And having both at 20%, right? Um, and those kinds of, um, metrics, right? Need to be, um, again, obviously on, on a QuickBooks system, you wouldn't have those type of metrics, but that's why like, uh, an expert in accounting or financial planning can help them kind of visualize them and explain to them, like, where the gap is in their business. How are they spending that money and where to focus on so that they really can expand the business instead of worrying about, if the number is right, right? Because <laughs> that, that's not what they're doing the business for, right? And it's good. I know that some business owners like want to have control of their business and kind of don't want to let it go because they want to know how much they're making. But that, that's why you have the expert. They can tell you, this is how much you're making and this is where you're spending it. So if you want to have hit this goal, this is the goal that like, this is the service that you need to sell. These are the products that you need to sell so that you, hit that goal and then you could actually I think it, it could be even easier in, in small companies you can make goals that are like maybe weekly goals or uh, daily goals right in bigger companies I know that that's a challenge because there's so many people involved in that small goal but again smaller companies is definitely a way to, to expand rapidly you need to make goals um, on a monthly basis and then what it, what does that mean on a weekly, daily basis so that you make sure that you're making that goal, right? Um, and I think that's one of the things that um, business owners that are trying to expand, they don't have that number in their mind. They're like not even, they're just expanding. They're just like selling, selling, and they're not thinking, how much do I really need to get to that goal, right? Like how much a day do I have to do to to create the revenue that I need or the revenue that I, you know, and another important piece is they don't know what's the, um, their, their point of the breaking point for them. So like how much do they actually have to do to, to sustain all the fixed costs that they have, all the, you know, costs that it's not going to change from one month to another. So when you have that, you know, that at least you need to make the minimum is that, but if you want to make money, you have to make more than that. Because otherwise you're just maintaining the business, just paying your paying your fixed costs, right? And you're not really expanding. Um, and that's something that they never think about or they never calculate because obviously they, they don't know how to do it, right? So it's great that they can be in their number and understand them. But having somebody that is expert in that field and can help them even better and explain what can um, what can they do and what can't they do in their business and have them execute that because at the end it's their business. I think that's super valuable for for a business for sure. 
Yeah, I mean, too often people are looking at, you know, how do I make the most amount of money? How do I just, you know, yeah. and they think the answer is just sell, 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 right? And, and uh, you know, oh, if I could just, you know, get another 100,000 units sold, uh, you know, these problems are solved, right? And, um, you know, there's a lot of infrastructure and support that goes along the way. It's not just about selling, uh, you know, as much as you possibly can. It's making sure that, as a whole, your company can, you know, get behind that support that you're not going to now have quality problems because you quadrupled your production in a week. And now, you know, certain safety uh, processes aren't being followed to hit those guidelines. And, you know, it just um, at least, you know, where that kind of resonates with me is it's it's about speed and being able to get uh, a full picture of where is my organization, where are all aspects of the organization the revenue generating side, the cost side, the production side, how do we get everything speaking together? And then to, you know, your point from before of, you know, if, if somebody, um, you know, is looking to execute on a vision, do we actually have the processes and systems in place to be able to have somebody be able to say, you know, we can do this or not? Yes, we can take that 400,000 unit order that just came in yesterday, or, you know, we have to have a conversation about, you know, does it have to really be there tomorrow or can it be there next week? Those types of things. And, you know, a lot of business owners, business executives are just kind of looking at the bottom line and the top line and, you know, and, and, you know, we got to improve this, improve that. And they really don't have the full financial health picture of, where are we really? How do we get to, you know, to your point of having goals, we have the goal, we want to get to a billion dollars in two years, in five years, whatever. Um, and then it's, you know, can we get there? Yes. But are we set up to be able to get there? What steps do we have to take between now and there to be able to get there? You know, there's, there's limited expertise of people being able to say we're truly on track or not. If you're just looking at your revenue numbers, then, you know, you're you're making a huge mistake versus having that full accurate picture. You know, and if you're relying on somebody who's, you know, just fumbling around with papers, you know, like what what uh, what, what's our revenue? And oh, let me get that for you. And they're like writing things down with a pencil and paper over there. You know, you're you're in big trouble over there. Yeah, definitely. What? um you know, say you're, you know, say you're an organization, maybe not, you know, just starting out, maybe you have, um, you know, a basic ERP, some, you know, something like that, you know, what do you think um, companies with, you know, limited budgets, limited ability to invest should, you know, should really be looking at, to, like, like, what gets the biggest bang for your buck in terms of, you know, your investment? And, you know, I'll ask the question twice and because I know you have the experience in the larger environments, the experience in the smaller environments, you know, the answer may or may not be the same depending on the perspective over there. But like, what, you know, where do you think, um, you know, companies should be looking at in terms of, of investment? Well, again, it, it depends on the size of the company and what they want to achieve and the type of company that it is, right? Because I would, I can't really tell you if like, if it's a service company, what would the type of system would be? I would say focus on a system, like if it's a service company, focus on a system that can, um, measure the results of the, employees that they have delivering the service right because that is going to be huge for a company it can make it, it can allow them to make decisions related to if that employee is efficient or not right if it's if they're, it's making because at the end all the people that they have in a service company that they hire is to provide service right and if um somebody is i wouldn't i wouldn't, don't want to say it this way but if somebody's lacking and right and it's not putting all the hours and they're not even booked. That That is a suggestion, an indicator that maybe people don't like that person, right? So maybe you need to evaluate the performance of that person and the system needs to allow you to see that performance easily and not just rely on if somebody likes this person or not, right? So ideally it would be measurable because also you have proof that really that person is not performing the way that other and you can compare, right? You can compare with other people who are doing the same job. They have higher rates of, um, you know, if it's an appointment type of service, higher rates of appointments because people are still booking again with them. So obviously for that type of um, 
of company, I would say that that would be very important. And that I would say that that connected with a financial system, like that I can provide financial numbers so that like whatever the service that they're doing equals to this. And then you can see that the, the whatever number um, you're seeing in the bank is um basically with that same structure so you like you have everything connected in that way i think it, it would be really important and if it's a product company i think that is definitely more challenge because you need you need depending on where you're sourcing your products because you could be sourcing overseas which makes it further more challenging if you're producing in the same country um but you need to track if the like the product you're you're um planning for is going to be on time what is the the time between um when you put an order and that order actually can ship and then what is the time until that is delivered to the customer or if you're shipping your warehouse to your warehouse because when you're planning for sales on that you need to know like if it, if you're waiting 40 days then you need to plan for in 40 days you need to plan on now having that order put there so that in 40 days you have the revenue. Otherwise, you're going to miss your revenue goals too. Um, and I think that's the biggest challenge it's in product type of companies to connect between the warehouse, the demand, sourcing, and then at the end, you know, the revenue um, that comes in in the company and all connected to the... I think obviously that is definitely more challenge uh, for uh, bigger companies at doing a product type of um, company, right? Um, but I would say that that definitely a system that allows them to have that visibility would be great. Like all those components of the business. So you need to evaluate what are the components of your whole business so that you can make sure that that system can track all those so that when you know, you know, maybe you put the order um, in a date, that was wrong. You put it 30 days before, not 40 on the days that you had. And now you know where you missed the, like, where's the error, right? And you can fix that, right? Okay. I messed up. It was 40 days, not 30. And I put the order through. So if you don't know that, then you can't fix the problem. And I think that's the challenge when you have, you don't have that type of system that allows you to connect that is that you can miss those type of, um, things. And at the end, you lose sales because of that, right? Um, which is, the challenge that you have when you're selling products. And and you also have to probably think of, um, you know, when we, COVID was happening, there was a lot of challenges, especially overseas on the product, like the time frame of shipping the product and the product arriving just expanded, like, I don't know, like a thousand percent, right? So obviously there was a lot of missed ships, Product could be missed uh, overseas while it's shipping. So there's so many challenges that can happen there, um, for sure. But I would say uh, for, for smaller companies, it's probably evaluating the same thing. Just evaluate what what are you selling? What is creating and driving the revenue? And see what is that process of revenue to get to that cost, like to the product or the service to that customer and have that all included. Make sure that the system can evaluate all that so that I think that the idea of having a system is so that you can fix the problems right away and know where the problem is, right? So it identify where, what is, um, making your revenue or whatever your process, uh, slower or not, you know, making the sales better. And, um, when you are able to identify that in a system, it makes it easier to fix the problem. If you need to go to so many, you know, parts and people just to know one data, then you need a better system. I think that, you know, an often overlooked piece um, is the whole supply chain um, analytics that you were uh, mentioning over there, because a lot of companies are looking at what's my profit, how much am I spending, you know, all of that, but they're not looking at things like, what is the timing of my, uh, you know, purchases versus you know when 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 I'm going to collect versus when I'm going to have to pay are the terms in line with when I have to pay vendors versus when I'm getting the money from my customers or am I doing something like you know my customers have 60 days to pay me and I have 30 days to pay my uh you know my vendors um you know to your point from before of the whole question of 
hey, I'm making all this money. How come I have no cash at any given time? Right. It's it's not, you know, necessarily just the amount of money you're making. It's the, um, you know, the the speed at which it's coming in, the speed at which it's coming out, the timing of when it comes in, the timing of when it comes out. Um, you know, whether you're purchasing from vendors that have certain risks associated to it, you know, to your point of ge- geographical versus, you know, is, is a vendor a newer vendor versus someone that's been around a while, all that kind of stuff that, you know, companies don't really take into account. And, you know, they just think of like, hey, my finance team is making a PL and a balance sheet for me and, you know, some uh, cash flow statement, right? But, um, there's, you know, there's a whole lot more to it than, you know, just creating a couple of financial reports and saying, hey, you're, you know, you're on track or you're not on track to, you know, to hitting your goals. Exactly. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that, that's a good, that's a good reminder that you gave me on, on the cash flow. I think one of the biggest issues is, is probably that, right? Because they need to pay the vendor right away, but the customer's paying in 60, 90 days sometimes. It's like crazy. And they're like, but I sold. I don't know, like 500k, but hey, but you never got that money. You haven't, they haven't paid you. And, and maybe you have like, um, customers that maybe they're not going to pay you for, you know, whatever reason it happens. Um, and now you're like chasing them to pay you. Um, and you know, what you thought you had in revenue is not like now 50% of that because you were not able to collect money right so and now you, you have a you still have to pay your bills <laughs> so so uh, you have that issue because you can't expand if you can't pay your bills because now they're not going to sell you more products right so right right and your margins might be great it just may be that you know with all the um revenue you're getting in they're on 60 90 day terms you're paying out in 30 day terms and you're broke because you know you've you've sold a lot you don't have the cash to cover the expenses on what you sold and you know, and, and it's a it's it's just as important to make sure that you have all of that in line as it is to, uh, you know, to make sure that you're, you know, constantly bringing in the, the, the revenue that you need to bring in to, you know, to ensure, uh, you know, sustainability for the company. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I know we're we're close to, to the end over here. Just, um, you know, last uh, question I wanted to, to ask you before we wrap up over here is, you know, I know you mentioned, you um, you know, for a lot of smaller companies, there are, you know, tools out there, they've got AI capabilities, things like that built into it. You know, where do you think, you know, AI kind of fits in, um, you know, at the current point in time? Is it, you know, is it f- just for the bigger companies? Is there a lot of value that, you know, smaller companies can benefit from, um, you know, from investing in AI? Is it kind of a mix? Is it a, you know, hey, you don't need to be there just yet, but, you know, you should be looking at it soon. You know, where where do you think, um, you know, companies should be directing their, you know, investments as it relates to, to AI? Yeah. So I think for, um, I would definitely think that smaller companies can take advantage of that. That's It's a huge plus for them because they, they need to move fast, right? And they need to move with that technology. And this is a tool that allows them, you know, to uh, what we talked at the beginning, to give them back their time because it it, it automates so much of the processes for them. Um, obviously, you have to be cautious about what exactly you need. It's not, I wouldn't say everything is good for the business. Some tools, especially in finance, like you know, that can identify certain patterns in your transactions and say, this is this type of transaction and then you don't have to worry about it. I think that's great and amazing because it saves so much time for the person. Um, Others probably are not, you know, they're they're just uh, developing and not as advanced as they could be as help for the company. Um, And, you know, there's a lot of uh, powerful tools for smaller companies, and even bigger companies that are using it, like, um, that creates graphs and creates visibility to their numbers. I don't know if, if you already mentioned this in other podcasts about Power BI. Um, that's uh, definitely a, a very big, powerful tool that it connects. Even, you know, if people are using Excel, you can connect so many spreadsheets or so many data and even systems into this uh powerful tool and allows visibility to numbers all in one place. Um, so I think 
that is definitely um I would recommend that tool because I have used it and it's it's a wonderful tool. And then I think I think what I've seen for bigger companies, um, they are very, I would say, reluctant to use IA in their process yet. They they have I have not seen that that has cascaded into the bigger companies yet. They're like more cautious, I would say, and they have like so many because they need to do the due diligence of like who's behind this. I don't know. Like I think there's a lot of um, you know something is new. You're afraid of of what it is and what it can do and security. You know they have to protect the company. So there's a lot of that involved. Um, so I haven't seen much bigger companies stepping in to utilize those tools, which for me, it gives smaller companies an advantage of like, use that tool in your favor because they are not using it yet. Right. So now you can take advantage of that tool and have it in your business for sure. Yeah, no, that's, that's definitely great. Uh, great advice. Um, you know, and I know we're we're at the end of the show over here. We really appreciate um, your your time, Sandra. You know, reminder to our audience out there just to you know make sure that you you know like and subscribe to our channel over here so that we can continue to bring uh, great guests like uh, like Sandra on here. That Sandra, we really appreciate your time today. Thank you guys for having me. It was really a pleasure. I I felt like super um comfortable with you guys so that's that's always great um especially when talking about finance like it's not for some people it's like not even an interesting topic right so <laughs> we're like passionate about it but then everybody's like who wants to a podcast about finance but it's so important i mean there's so much that it can do for a business for a business owner you know for a company just to have your numbers right so i appreciate the the invite for here Sandra, what's the best way for um, for people to get in contact with you if they have any follow up questions or you know any any advice? Um, yeah, definitely available on LinkedIn. Uh, I think that's the best platform for professionals. Um, it's with my name, so I think it's easy to find. I'm, I'm a public, so it's open. It's not private. You can find me. I think um, very easily. I think that's that's the easiest way um, to connect with me for sure. 